Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now before we do that, let us understand the renal tubule in more detail because we I just uh, told you the names and where they are located in the figure. Let us talk a little more about the renal tubules. So let us look at the different parts of the renal tubule. The first part is the Bowman's capsule. So what happens? Capsule, the name again, that's a covering. So it is the covering of the glomerulus. As I said, capsule will should always remind you of covering. So this is going to cover your glomerulus and it is a double walled epithelial cup shaped structure. So you can see the two walls. This is one wall. This is another wall. So these are the two walls. It is made up of epithelial tissues and it is a cup shaped structure. You see? shape of a cup like this it encloses the glomerulus so the glomerulus is present inside this it is located in the cortical region of the kidney cortical region is what the cortex of the kidney so that means this portion the glomerulus as well as the bowman's capsule is present in the cortex next is the pct proximal convoluted tubule convoluted means coiled proximal means nearby so this is a coiled tubule which is located nearby to the glomerulus. So this portion is the proximal convoluted tubule. This part is PCT. It is highly coiled tubular structure. So you can just look at the picture how coiled this is. It is located in the cortical region of kidney. So this one, this portion is also present in the cortex. Next is the Henley's loop. It, it has two limbs. Basically, the Henley's loop is a U-shaped structure. So that is why it has two limbs. One is the descending limb because in this limb, the fluid flows in the downward direction and the other limb is the ascending limb because the fluid flows in the upward direction. So this is going to be the descending limb and this one is going to be the ascending limb. So it is located in the medulla of kidney. So that means this region is located in the medulla. So now you can imagine where exactly it is located in the kidney because when you think of the structure of the kidney, it is somewhat like this. So this portion is cortex, this outer portion and medulla would be these portions. You remember? Right. So now if you think of this figure, it would be somewhat like this. Maybe this would be the Bowman's capsule and then this is how the U-shaped structure would be. So this is how it is located. So just the U-shaped structure will be inside the medulla. The rest of the things will be in the cortex. Next, distal convoluted tubule. This is again a highly coiled structure. It extends from the Henley's ascending loop. So after Henley's ascending loop, this coiled structure, that is the distal convoluted tubule. It is located in the cortex region. Again, this is also cortex. And now the last one, that is the collecting duct. It is a straight tubular structure. You can just see a straight tube in which multiple DCTs open. Now all these tube-like structures will carry the uh, fluid. Now many distal convoluted tubules will open into this collecting ducts because this is not just one there is just not just one glomerulus present in a kidney one kidney will have million of nephrons so there will be million of glomerulus million of bowman's capsule million of distal convoluted tubules so so many distal convoluted tubule will give their or will pour their fluid into the collecting duct this collecting duct will extend from cortex to the inner parts of medulla. So this portion is cortex, this entire portion. So you can consider it like this. This portion, the upper portion is the cortex and the lower portion is the medulla. So this collecting duct extends from cortex to medulla. And where does the collecting duct go? The collecting ducts in turn open into renal pelvis. You remember? When in the structure of the kidney, I told you that there is a funnel shaped structure here. So these collecting ducts reach up to medulla. From there, it pours the fluid into the, now the fluid which comes out of the collecting duct 
is nothing but urine so it pours the urine into the calyces the minor calyces then to the major calyces then to the renal pelvis that is the funnel shaped structure and from renal pelvis it gets into the ureters so that is how the movement of the urine take place so now we understood where exactly the urine formation take place now the question is how urine formation take place now if you look at the structure of the nephron what enters the nephron structure is blood so blood is the input here because blood enters through the afferent arteriole into the glomerulus and what is the output output from the collecting duct is urine so now we need to understand this process of formation of urine from blood so how is the waste extracted from the blood and urine is formed that is what we have to understand another important thing that we will talk about is uh, regarding to this henle's loop just now i said that the henle's loop extend into the medulla i mean it goes deep inside the medulla however that is not the case always in certain cases it goes deep into the medulla in certain cases it doesn't go that deep into the medulla it remains only till the cortex now based on in which cases it the henle's loop is long and in which cases the henle's loop is short nephrons are classified into two types so we will talk about those two types of ne nephrons now so here you can look at this picture to understand it further so like as i said this would be the collecting duct right and this would be the henle's loop and all other structures will be present here in the cortex so from here it will get into the minor calyces from minor calyces to major calyces from there it will get into renal pelvis and then it will come out through the ureter that is how it will flow now let us talk about the two types of nephrons that is the cortical and juxta medullary nephrons so these are the two types of nephrons based on the length of the henle's loop now what are cortical nephrons where the henle loop of henle or the henle's loop is very short now if the henle's loop is very short in that case what happens is let us suppose if this is the division let us suppose this is cortex and this is medulla so now in this picture you can see that since the henle's loop is quite short it doesn't go deep inside the medulla so these type of nephrons are called cortical nephrons because most of the part of the nephron is located in the cortex so the term cortical is derived from cortex so they are called cortical nephrons only a small portion of nephron extends into the medulla so if you see only a small portion of it is into the medulla the other type is juxta medullary nephron so here you have the term medullary because it extends into the medulla so here the loop of henle is quite long so here if you see if this is your cortex and if this is your medulla then you actually see that the loop of henle is so long that it goes deep inside the medulla and that is why they are called juxta medullary nephrons so in this case loop of henle runs deep into the medulla so these are the two terms or these are the two types of nephrons which you should remember because when we talk about the process of urine formation and many other different mechanisms we will we might be using these terms so at that time you should know what are they thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again